Randy Orton is now on SmackDown moving forward. A show-long storyline on Friday saw Randy Orton choose SmackDown over Raw despite Paul Heyman's pleas. Early in the show, it was announced that Randy Orton was a free agent, with SmackDown GM Nick Aldis inviting him with the intention of making him exclusive to SmackDown. Orton had been part of the Raw roster before being sidelined with a back injury last year. In the main event segment, both Raw GM Adam Pearce and Aldis attempted to sign Orton to their brand. Heyman came out and told Orton he wasn't going to make his decision because the bloodline would do it for him. Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso so came out and attacked Orton until Ali Knight came out for the save, brawling with Sokoa to the back. Orton then laid out Jimmy Uso, threw out the Raw contract, and signed with SmackDown to end the show. Orton made his return at Survivor Series teaming with Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, and Jey Uso to defeat the Judgment Day and Drew McIntyre inside War Games. CM Punk will return to WWE SmackDown on Friday, December 8th, Tribute to the Troops episode. Punk will presumably cut a promo on the show, as his WWE comeback match has yet to be announced. WWE has announced a United States Championship Tournament to crown a new number one contender to Logan Paul's title. Eight competitors will take part in the tournament, with the winner facing Logan Paul for the U.S. title at a date not yet announced. Bobby Lashley, Karrion Cross, Dragon Lee, Santos Escobar, Kevin Owens, Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, and one NXT star to be announced will be the participants. The tournament begins on next week's SmackDown Tribute to the Troop Show with a pair of first round bouts. Dragon Lee will face Santos Escobar in one contest, while Bobby Lashley takes on Karrion Cross in the other. Logan Paul had previously defeated Rey Mysterio at last month's Crown Jewel pay-per-view to win the U.S. title, kicking off his first championship reign in WWE. Additionally, WWE has confirmed a few appearances that Roman Reigns will be making this December and January. The undisputed WWE Universal Champion will make his next WWE appearance on the December 15th edition of SmackDown. Reigns has also been announced for the January 5th and January 19th episodes of SmackDown. The shows are being held in Green Bay, Vancouver, and Atlanta. Reigns' most recent appearance was at WWE Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia earlier this month where he defeated LA Knight to retain the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Interference from the Bloodline helped Reigns win the match. It is expected that Reigns will make his next title defense at the Royal Rumble on Saturday, January 27th. Dave Meltzer has reported that WWE is not currently planning a Reigns Alley Knight rematch for that PLE. In other news, WWE has reportedly discussed a potential dream match pitting CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Fightful is reporting that several higher ups in the company are said to be pushing for the match to take place. Many in WWE are hopeful and even optimistic that the match will happen at some point. The idea is believed to have already been discussed with CM Punk, with sources noting that the ideal scenario would be for the two to meet in person and discuss ideas as a next step. However, it was also noted that there's a lot to get through first before the match can be made. Austin and Punk appear to have a mutual admiration for each other. Austin praised Punk during an interview with Forbes earlier this year and also addressed the idea that he was an influence on Punk's career. Punk also wore a Stone Cold Steve Austin t-shirt while delivering his famous pipe bomb promo in 2011. Keeping with CM Punk news, Brian Danielson says he is grateful for CM Punk's time in AEW. On the Maggie and Perloff show, Brian Danielson confirmed that he is part of AEW's disciplinary committee, but couldn't elaborate on details regarding CM Punk's firing from AEW following an altercation with Jack Perry at All In. Brian Danielson mentioned that he likes CM Punk and there's not a lot that he can say or really wants to say about what went down. Danielson denied reports that he headed the committee, saying that most of the people involved in the decision to fire Punk were lawyers. When asked if it was a difficult move to fire CM Punk, Danielson said that it was, that he has a lot of empathy for him and is grateful for the time he spent in AEW given that he did a good job. And he went as far as to wish him best in his future, saying that he hoped it goes well. And speaking of Brian Danielson, 
Tony Khan has commented on Brian Danielson's long-term future in AEW. Danielson revealed in September that he promised his six-year-old daughter that he would finish up as a full-time wrestler around August of next year. Tony Khan told The Athletic recently that although Brian will no longer be with the promotion full-time, he will remain in AEW in spirit and make occasional sporadic appearances. Danielson posted to social media on Friday referring to next year's All In as possibly his last chance to wrestle in the UK. And speaking of the UK, Tony Khan is hailing AEW All-In 2024 as a huge success. Tony wrote on X Friday that the company has already sold over $4 million in tickets for next year's All-In event at Wembley Stadium on August 25th. WrestleTix is reporting that the initial number of tickets distributed for next year's event currently stands at 33,923 and is set up for 44,452. The pre-sale for All-In started on November 27th. Additionally, the date and location for AEW Revolution has been announced. During Wednesday's Dynamite, Tony Schiavone revealed that Revolution will take place on March 3rd at the Greensboro Coliseum in North Carolina. Sting previously announced that his final match will take place at Revolution. Mercedes Monet posted a new video to her official YouTube channel on Wednesday. The 90-second video features her doing some in-ring training, running the ropes, and taking part in various drills. The description of the video on YouTube reads, Mercedes Monet is back in the ring. She hasn't wrestled since suffering an ankle injury at New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Resurgence on May 21st. Willow Nightingale ended up winning the match and the New Japan Strong Women's Championship that night when an audible was called after Monet suffered the injury. And despite wrestling one match for Ring of Honor, Ronda Rousey has confirmed that she has no plans of joining AEW right now. While being interviewed by TMZ Sports, Ronda Rousey was asked if we'll be seeing her in AEW anytime soon. She responded saying she doesn't think so. When asked why, she said she's focused on being home with her family and being a full-time mom. Ronda Rousey made her surprise Ring of Honor debut at a taping in Los Angeles on November 17th following episodes of AEW Rampage and Collision. She and Marina Shafir defeated Athena and Billy Starks in a tag team match. The match aired on the November 23rd episode of Ring of Honor Television. In the Wrestling Observer News letter last week, Dave Meltzer reported that Ronda Rousey's Ring of Honor appearance was believed to be a one-time thing, writing that Ronda working the match was basically a favor to alleviate a complex political issue and help her friend Marina Shafir. Ronda last competed for WWE at SummerSlam this August, where she lost to Shayna Baszler in an MMA rules match. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest, catching you up on the events of the weekend. Until next time, see you on the next one.